So I thought to myself, what can I give advice to people that they have actually control over that will make them attractive? And as I'm telling you these things, I want you to imagine a brother or a sister that you're speaking to for marriage, and they have these attributes, and tell me they don't suddenly become a little bit more attractive in your eyes. All right? Here's the things I came up with that I said that makes people attractive. Ten traits that make you more attractive. Number one, someone who is content with whatever Allah has given you, you are content, you're grateful. Imagine a husband or a wife with whatever situation you, they are in, inshallah, things will get better, but whatever situation they are, they're content. Having a husband or wife in that situation is 10 times easier than someone who's always, always uh, disgruntled. Number two, someone who holds themselves accountable for where they are now and they don't blame others. They take accountability. So instead of just saying, my ex, my ex, my ex, look, I'm not going to talk negative about my ex. I want to look, rather look internally and say, what could I have done to be a better person? What could I do to be better? If you have that mindset, and you're talk, sisters, you're talking to a brother, and he says, listen, I'm not going to talk negative about my ex. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her or give her the best husband in the world. But I realize that some of the things I would, could have done better would have been this, this, and this. And those are the things I've improved on. And when he says something like that, it's so much more attractive than if you're hearing him, yeah, let me tell you how bad she was, and blah, 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 and like, okay, is he going to be talking to, to, about me like this? You know, so, number three, someone who is quick to forgive and late to anger. Being able to hold your tongue in times where there's, especially when there's a lot of emotions and conflict going on, that has a lot of value. If you have a husband or wife, a spouse, that's able to do that, it's priceless, and that will lead a lot of uh, remove a lot of unnecessary arguments and, and disputes. Next, and this is from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu someone who is most beneficial to others. There's, a hadith, there's many hadiths that are very similar. Uh, one is the uh, best of you who is best to his wives. But one is specifically, and this is my favorite hadith, it's a very long hadith, but it's my favorite of all the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's one that's the, it, it, this beginning of it starts off with something uh, along the lines of the ones, the one, best of you is the one who's most beneficial to others. Um, and then if you have a husband or wife that has a mentality of being beneficial, and you'll see people, by the way, in, lo in the local masjids, in the local community, those who are always beneficial to others, when those people are missing, they are truly missed. It's so like, where is so-and-so? You know, everyone misses these people, and you can be that person. And again, this isn't, there's nothing that prevents us from having any of these attributes. The next one, number five. Someone who doesn't compromise their dean, even if it puts them in an awkward situation. All of us have been in that situation. It's where we ha being Muslim in this environment is very easy. But sometimes being Muslim in a different environment is not so easy, especially if you're the only Muslim. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a flight where I'm praying and people are talking to me. <laughs> I'm at the airport. How many times, like all these r random stuff happens and I'm the only Muslim in this area that's like, I don't know if there's other Muslims in the airport or whatever, but I'm praying. So it happens, but I don't care. Like, and the fact that they don't care, uh, that says a lot. They don't, uh, next one. Uh, someone who has the life skills that will make him a good husband or wife. This is something that's missing from our generation right now, by the way. A lot of people are like, I want this, 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 this in a spouse. Okay, what do you bring to the table? They're like, uh, what? I said, what do you bring? Like, what life skills do you have that your spouse will find beneficial as a good husband or as a good wife? Right? So what can you do? And people don't know. So you have to develop these life skills. And there's a lot of them, by the way. For both male and female, learning how to cook will save you a lot of money, guys. A lot of money. Right? And that's a good skill to have. Our parents had it. Well, we just, for some reason, we don't have it. Our generation is missing it. We have DoorDash. Someone who is humble, and there's number seven. There's only ten of them. Someone who is humble, has a humble personality, even with the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. If you're humble and you have no, no gifts, uh, it's easy to be humble. But if you're humble and you've been gifted with beauty, with wealth, with social status, with something, and you're still humble, and not fake humble. You know, fake humble, you know, the fake humble. Goes, oh, yeah, I don't know how I do it so well. Like, I, it's so hard to be a millionaire. Like, you know, it's like that kind of stuff. No. But truly humble, that shows you that it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very rare uh, attribute to have, and people who have it says a lot about their character. Number eight, someone who treats the least, most imp the least important person in their world 
with the same respect as those who are above them. Find the least most important, least significant person in your life. Person who, like for some reason, a male's bathroom, women's bathroom, I don't know if it has or not, but male's bathroom, sometimes in the fancy restaurants, there's a person there just giving you a napkin and giving you a cologne and stuff like that. No one even pays attention to this person. Or the janitor who's cleaning the place and no one's paying attention to this person. Treating that person with kindness and respect the same way you would treat the president if the president walked through that door. A lot of times you'll see people treat people differently based on their status and what I can benefit from you. And if you see someone treat even the least significant person with respect and with kindness, it says a lot about their uh, personality. And by the way, you will see all these things I'm referring to transform when you are disagreeing and arguing with your spouse. Because you see the level of discipline and kindness and their character. Because all of us, no matter how perfect of a husband or wife you think you'll find, you'll find somebody you are going to argue and fight with them. And how you fight makes a world of difference. We're almost done here. Number nine is someone who doesn't give up just because something is hard to do. All of us will go through those challenges. And sometimes things are really hard to do. One thing that's hard to do is to get married. Go to these single events. Go on using websites. Go through your family. Tell your friends. Talk to people. It doesn't work out. Talk to somebody else. It doesn't work out. Talk to somebody else. It doesn't work out. Man, this is hard. Yeah, but I'm not going to give up. And that says a lot about you. That shows you have resilience. Finally, someone who has a discipline, being able to resist things, even if it gives them pleasure. And what I mean by that is a lot of times it's hard for us to, like for brothers, is our challenges is lowering the gaze sometimes to see. For the sisters, their challenge is not as difficult for lowering the gaze, but to be seen will be a different challenge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with beauty. And so it's harder for like that challenge than it is for brothers. We don't, to all, all due respect brothers, we are not the beautiful creatures. No, no, like generally, the men are not like Yusuf's story. Right? Story of Yusuf is so unique because there's like one Yusuf. The most men, this is the thing that's interesting about sisters and brothers. I'll, I didn't have too much time to go over this, but maybe next time, inshallah. But it's interesting how the minds think so differently with the two genders. The majority of sisters do not find the majority of brothers attractive. I'm being honest with you guys. I'll tell you something, sisters, that may surprise you. The majority of brothers find the majority of sisters attractive. It's different. Sisters, if a sister is talking to her friend, and their friend, none of their friends find you attractive, they'll make you a little bit less attractive. But if all her friends find you attractive, they find you suddenly a little bit more attractive. For brothers, it doesn't work like that whatsoever. If all his friends don't find you attractive, it will not make a difference if he finds you attractive or not. And if all his friends say she's very attractive, it won't make you attractive if he's not attractive. We're, our brains think differently. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's wisdom in Allah making us different. So we're not trying to force your husband to be like you or your wife to be like you. It's going to frustrate you. Accept the beautiful differences that Allah has made between us. And if you do, it'll give you a lot less uh, struggle with that.